Have you ever felt stuck? Of course, we all have. Sometimes families fall apart, friendships separate. Refocus is about just because life gets off course doesn't mean you have to. Join us in this movement, this ministry. Join us in the choice to make your life what you want it to be. Refocus. It is time. Hello, my name is Aspernet Mingle Watkins. I am from Sylvania, Georgia, where I grew up with my mom and my dad and my brother. My parents have been married over 30 something years, and this is my refocus story. Um, back in 2015, my whole life that I knew that was perfect um, crumbled before me. Um, it changed uh, dramatically. I went through a divorce. And in the course of that divorce, um, I found out that my child, my youngest son, was sick with an illness called Chiari malformation. The diagnosis name for it is called Arnold Chiari syndrome. During the course of this time, um, I've had to really transition um, into a different life. And it has been very, very hard for me um, becoming from being a wife and then becoming a single mother. And after that, um, also as far as taking care of my child. The Chiari malformation is um, a rare condition. It is a condition where a part of the brain is pushed down to the spinal cord. And in my son's case, it's very rare because most people that have it is only one to two or three to four centimeters into the spinal cord. But my son, his was 14 centimeters of his brain was pushed down to his spinal cord. At first, I did not understand um, what to do, how to go about doing it. I just knew that I had to get him some help. Um, being up six o'clock, five o'clock, four o'clock in the mornings um, for like literally six months straight, not really getting any sleep, you know, having to hear my child cry and scream in pain and not being able to help him. Um, but it was basically when I knew that something had to be done my son went into the hospital, he had pneumonia, and in the course of him having pneumonia, the nurse came in about three o'clock that morning and said, well, what's wrong? You know, does he normally scream like this? And I did, I said, yes, he's been doing this now for about five to six months. I took him to the doctor. Um, they just said maybe he's just having some headaches or, or nightmares. But I knew as a mother that something was really wrong with him. So after he got out of the hospital, um, they later referred him to a doctor in Savannah. I didn't feel comfortable with that. So I went on the internet, started searching um, different neurologists in Augusta. I found a neurologist in Augusta. Um, the nurse practitioner's name is Ashley Steinmeier. She immediately got us in for an appointment and everything changed after that. After he was seen by the neurologist, they knew that they had to go ahead and get an uh, MRI. The MRI is the only thing that actually detects his condition. And he got the MRI done. Immediately after he got the MRI, I would say maybe like the next day after the neurologist re reviewed the results, they then called me and gave me the results over the phone. Most of the time, you know, when you go to a doctor, they have you to come in for an appointment. But this particular time, they knew it was very urgent, so they called me and told me what his condition was. Um, with this condition, um, it basically affected his um, ability to be able to see properly at times, his ab ability to hear or um, be sensitive to loud music or noise. Um, he began to fall and um, just having different, a, different uh, a lot of different neurological problems um, in the course of him having a lot of incontinence um, from being potty trained to then not being able to have any control over you know, their bowel function or um, being able to use the restroom. 
So they immediately said they need to do surgery on him. He had his first surgery during the course of the transition and for my divorce. And it was very hard. It was so hard for me. And that was something then I knew that I had to really get with people that I knew that will be able to help get me through this, such as my mom, my pastor, and um, one of my leading ladies at my church um, was able to help me and pray with me during the course of this time because it was very difficult for me to be able to have to face going through a divorce and being able to face dealing with a sick child. So he had his surgery and the surgery took at this particular time about eight hours. Um, everything seemed like it was, you know, going good. Um, he seemed as if he was doing well. Well, a year later, in May of this year, he had his second surgery and it was very, very devastating. Caleb began falling. He um, then just started having a lot of um, like mood swings, just mood changes and you know, not being able to really function around people, um, being very isolated, um, very just standoffish, not being himself. So as a mother, I knew that something was wrong. He will get to the point where he'll get so sick that he'll just throw up and, you know, just a lot of neurological problems. He'll just scream and cry. And so they went back in, they did another MRI. And after they did this MRI, they then began to tell me that it had affected his spinal cord severely. The spinal cord was basically pushed down. It was starting to bend. And they told me if he hadn't, if he did not have the surgery, that was on a Wednesday, if he did not have the surgery, that he would basically be paralyzed. So that was on a Wednesday. He had his procedure that Monday, that following Monday. And um, everything after that was just really chaotic. He was in ICU for about six or seven days. Um, when he went in for surgery, the surgery actually took 10 hours this particular time. When they went in and did his surgery, they had to go in and put screws in his spinal cord to lift his spine up to relieve pressure and everything off his brain. He does have um, a rod on the right side of his head and a rod on the left side, back side of his head. When the surgeon came out and basically gave me the results. I thought everything was fine, but when the surgeon came out, he basically was just like, I really don't know if this surgery is going to work after seeing what I seen. He had so many ligaments and nerves that was connected together. He had to individually take those apart to try to help relieve pressure off his brain. He had to remove um, two different portions of his skull to relieve pressure off his brain. And Caleb was really in bad shape. Um, I didn't know what was going to happen. The only thing I knew that I had to do was pray and, you know, cleave to those that I knew that was able to help me and lift me up during the, that, that was a time that was very difficult for me. Um, so the very next day, Caleb, you know, had to do another MRI and they want to make sure that everything went well. They did a spinal infusion with this spinal infusion. Caleb is not able to really be, he's not able to move his neck from left to the right. It really eliminates his ability to move his neck. Um, but they do that to basically help his spine stay in place and to keep it from, keep him from becoming paralyzed. So they did that. And then the next day, the surgeon came in and spoke with me and said, Ms. Watkins, I think we got it. I think, I think this time the surgery is going to work. So after that, um, Caleb stayed in ICU for about seven days. Then later, um, they put him in a room and he was in a hospital for a course of maybe two weeks in Augusta. And over the time, Caleb has been going to physical therapy. He does physical therapy, occupational therapy, and speech therapy. With this condition, it has um, affected his speech. Um, it has affected his whole right side. His right side is his weaker side and it's been very complicated for him. But his school um, and, you know, his um, doctors, they have been very supportive as in getting me what I need anytime that he gets sick. 
um, they tell me to bring him right on in um, because they know that this condition is very serious and it's very rare. You know, something as, such, as light as simple as a headache um, will really affect him in a different way than what it was for, for a normal person. So he has been through a lot. I have been through a lot. But overall, you know, I had to get myself to a place where I had to bring myself back together, get myself, you know, build myself back up, build my self-esteem back up because at a point I was at my lowest. I was, I, I just couldn't, I felt like I couldn't go no further. I couldn't move on. I couldn't, you know, cope with this thing called life. And I finally got myself to a place where I was able to build myself back up with the help of God, my family, um, great friends, and people that I knew that had my best interests at heart. If it was not for those people and for me having the faith that I have in God, I would not be here today. I would not be here today. I wouldn't want to live. I didn't want to live at one point in time. I just felt like it was too much to take on. And to be able to have to take care of a child that's helpless and for a mother, a mother will love to take care, take that child pain away from them. But to not be able to do that was very detrimental for me. And I knew once I got myself back to this, to that place of being my normal self, that I would be able to help my children, help them grow and be able to take care of him like I desired to take care of him. And that is my story. And that's how I was able to refocus my life.